Greetings, everyone. We welcome you and all visitors to St. Andrew Catholic Church's celebration of the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please remember to check the online bulletin to keep you informed of all parish activities, as well as mass times and upcoming communion service times. Today, we will have a second collection for the Diocese of Atlanta's St. Vincent de Paul. Per the CDC guidelines, masks are required while on campus here at St. Andrews, including for the duration of the mass for ages two and up. Please remember to have the masks cover both your mouth and nose for proper protection. Thanks for helping us keep our community safe. Leading us in today's Eucharistic celebration is Father Paul Burney and Deacon Tom Gottschall. The intention for this Mass is for the repose of the soul of Howard Lovejoy. We ask now that you please take a moment to check to see that your cell phones and other electronic devices are turned off before Mass begins. We gather here in our place of worship about to celebrate the gift of our very faith in word and sacrament. Let us take a few moments then to quietly gather our thoughts as we prayerfully ready ourselves for our communal celebration of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It's about everyday faith we hear in the scriptures today, finding the Lord in the 
simple things, the quiet things that surround us most days. We call to mind our frailty, our sin, our lack of love, and we beg the Lord's mercy and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. 
At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the rocks, in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. There are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all 
God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, as they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat, began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter. And he said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. We're, uh, most, all of us from St. Thomas Aquinas down the road are filling in for Father Dan this week, and I think uh, you may be aware that it, his father is in his final agony, so he is uh, with him and the family. I haven't had a chance to uh, preside here since the uh, renovation took place. I love the, cl- the cleanness of the light. It's really very, very wonderful. Those LED lights are spectacular. I've been here for a couple of penance services in the meantime, but it's my my first time to celebrate again with you. Nice to be here. Uh, I'm Father Paul Burney. I got introduced at the beginning, but I'm a retired priest. The cane gives it away, I guess. I'm uh, in residence. I've been in residence at St. Thomas Aquinas for about uh, almost 10 years now. Uh, I've seen three pastors (laughs) while I've been there. So anyway, good, good. Once again, I say good to be with you. Let's face it, it seems uh, in today's gospel that uh, Jesus was setting his disciples up. (laughs) He uh, sends them off by themselves so they can be left to their own devices. While he uh, goes up in prayer, Uh, last week's gospel he was at prayer as well, if you remember. He was in a boat by himself on the, the lake, contemplating the death of his cousin, 
John the Baptist, drinking it in. I imagine saying to himself, if this is what they did to John, what will they do to me? What will it be like? But there they are off by themselves, and a storm comes up as we hear. And they will not be able to handle it on their own. Jesus remains behind us, a wrapped in prayer, alone, in this wonderful conversation with his Father. When the storm rises and he hears their cries and shouts, he moves to them walking on the water. And in their fear, of course, they cry out. Imagine lightning, thunder, much like last night, huh? They see his figure in the midst of rain and lightning and think, it's a ghost, a ghost. He calls to them to get hold of themselves and to trust in him. Peter tests the situation, but his fear gets the better of him, doesn't it? As it usually does. And he falters, needing Jesus to step in at the end to rescue him. When they, when rather he enters the boat and the storm and the wind die down, all the disciples worship him and proclaim him to be son of God. Uh, we're in St. Matthew and later on in the gospel, right at the end in fact, St. Matthew gives us a similar encounter of Jesus with his disciples after the disciples' desertion of Jesus, of course, and his passion and his return to them in his risen self, his risen body. He gathers them together as he is about to ascend back to the Father. Matthew says, after he instructed them, that they worshipped him, but they also doubted. You'd think that in the light of the resurrection and this beautiful appearance of Jesus in his risen body, that their doubts and their fears would pass away. But this is exactly how Matthew addresses the reality of everyday faith. Everyday faith. What we have been given in these Gospels, this one and the one at the end, is an example of the daily life of the Christian. The daily struggle to let our relationship with Jesus grow so that our fears, our fears can be cast out and not dominate our lives. We still encounter storms. We find ourselves sinking instead of, afraid rather, of being overwhelmed. We will doubt even in the face of believing every word of doctrine and creed, as we will profess shortly. Jesus invites us beyond all this to the fact that trusting in him and him alone will allow us to overcome these fears. Today's challenges of isolation and, and quarantine are certainly storms of this variety. And it's not just in the most stressful of situations, in the darkest hours, a testing of our faith, that this is so. That's what the story of the prophet Elijah is all about, isn't it? Elijah, summoned by God for a revelation of him at Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, expects, as most of us would, I think, to experience him in the spectacular. We're going to see God, huh? In a great rushing of wind, destructive wind, tearing trees apart, a tornado of some kind, huh? Or in an earthquake, shattering rocks, rocks falling everywhere around, shaking. Or in a tempestuous burning fire. But God is not in any of these. Instead, the prophet discovers God in the tiny whispering sound. In the gentle breeze, huh? 
that is so often a part of our daily lives that we overlook it, distracted and tempted by so many other louder voices. It's powerful enough, this still, small voice, and its quietness that it humbles the prophet to cover his face and to leave his place of refuge in the cave and face the world without fear. He was hiding, running from Jezebel, (laughs) that evil woman. We will doubt. We will at times be tempted to sink and be overwhelmed by the cares and the distractions of our world. But we're invited to see in the simple, gentle things of Jesus that surround us that we need not fear that we will be lost. There is most importantly the gentle grace of his sacraments, forgiving, healing, uniting us as his body. That tiny whispering sound that speaks to the depth of our souls that we belong to God now and forever. He says to us today, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And so we allow him to love us And we let him push ourselves to love one another a bit more. Because as St. John tells us, perfect love casts out fear. And we all want to be as Jesus invites us to be perfect, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Loving Jesus, help us to Grasp your hand always when there are storms and when there are not. To hear your voice in the many voices that life gives us. To be courageous in all we do for you and for all those you love. And so we respond to God's word with our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Jesus tells his disciples, he tells us, do not be afraid. So with perfect trust that banishes all fear, let us present our prayers of petition and praise before the Lord. We pray for the worldwide church. May we recognize God's presence both 
in the extraordinary and ordinary events of our lives so we may cooperate with God more fully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our elected officials and all who are entrusted with the common good. May they strive to work together through mutual respect and goodwill with the goal of promoting true justice and peace for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of St. Andrew, those gathered here and those joining us remotely. May we hear the voice of Christ calling us to not be afraid, even when the tossing waves of challenges seem insurmountable. May we never tire of calling out for God's saving help, learning to turn to him in every circumstance, recognizing that the Lord will always be there to prevent us from sinking, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our children who received First Holy Communion today. May their participation in the sacrament of the Eucharist help them gain deeper awareness of God's love and presence in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those communi communities recovering from hurricanes, floods, and other natural disasters, may God provide them with courage and strength, easing their pain, helping them to find resources to repair and rebuild, and touching the hearts of many who assist them in their times of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work and live from the sea, sailors, fishermen, and all their families, may God protect and guide them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the ill, especially those with the virus. May God relieve their suffering, bring healing, and sustain them as they work to recover their strength. We pray for all medical personnel, researchers, and scientists experiencing this pandemic. May they take courage and recognize Jesus stretching out his hand, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they now find everlasting peace in God's heavenly home. We pray also for those who mourn. May they find comfort of the presence of Jesus speaking to them with the words, take courage, do not be afraid, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the, we pray for the prayers we hold in our hearts. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in you we find courage and strength for the journey of faith. Hear our prayers that we might be a comforting presence to those who are suffering in our families and our community. We ask all this through Christ, who is Lord forever and ever.
Pray now, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew, St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Bishop, his brother bishops Bernard and Joel, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Just a quick reminder, the, uh, for distribution, distribution of Holy Communion, we come from the side aisles, come forward, and uh, then uh, after you receive the host, you'll step aside, receive, uh, re uh, consume the host, and go back down the uh, center aisles. Um, I think you know the drill. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and to be
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I have a few announcements. You probably heard me say in the prayers of the faithful that we had uh, First Holy Communion today, and uh, a whole bunch of our students received First Communion. I think, I think at other Masses uh, this Sunday, we'll also have a few, and it's been a wonderful, it's been a bumper crop of First Holy Communicants, I'll, I'll just tell you that. Um, at St. Thomas, but it's, it was wonderful, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that, Father. Um, Faith formation will be conducted virtually, at least through the first half of the fall. Uh, classes uh, beginning on Sunday, September 13, and this will be online. Uh, this will include uh, elementary school, middle school, high school youth ministry. Um, so it'll be interesting. Uh, hopefully our, all our families will be very uh, tuned into that, and hopefully uh, any families that need help with that will reach out to us so that we can uh, help with that. Um, if the, with the, as with uh, all things in our lives, uh, this will be reevaluated as time goes on. Uh, so please, uh, any families, uh, please register your students from K through 12 this week. And you can go to our website at standrewcatholic.org. Uh, a change of date notification, the Archdiocesan-wide Golden and Diamond Marriage Anniversary Mass has been changed to December 5. It was uh, a time in October, so December 5, kids. That's right. That's 50 and 60 years. We got some in, in, the, in the house here tonight. Amen. Father. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, August 15th. Is that right, everybody? August 15th. Uh, since it falls on a Saturday, it's been determined as not a holy day of obligation, but we can still celebrate with Mass, right? Um, we'll offer two Masses uh, celebrating the feast, so you can come on Friday of this week, the 14th, at 7 p.m. That will be in Spanish or Saturday morning, the 15th at 9 a.m. in English. Please remember that the best way to stay informed on all our details or contact information with everything mentioned is on our online bulletin. Our bulletin. Don't forget the census if you haven't uh, filled that out. Most everybody's filled that out by now. And as you leave today, you can donate to our regular offertory and our second collection, which is for our Archdiocesan uh, St. Vincent de Paul Society. I see baskets at the exits, so um, make sure that we shake you down sufficiently to get the rest of your money on your way out. That's it. Thank you for being here, Father, and for Good your time. My pleasure. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.